Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. As I've done for the last several years, I want to thank Rob Daniel and Rob Tyler for allowing me to teach Torah this morning in memory of my mom. While she was not traditionally Jewishly educated, she certainly was my first teacher of Torah. Our Parsha this week is about blessings and legacies. In, it is in the end of Yaakov's life that he calls for his sons and his grandsons in order to give them individual blessings. Within these blessings, we see Yaakov offering gifts which both reflect reality and often insight into the future. Reuben the oldest gets a whopper. I think his might be my favorite. He is called the fruit of my vigor and finishes with, unstable as water, you shall excel no longer because when you mounted your father's bed, you brought disgrace. It's an interesting blessing. You started off well and then you brought a huge disgrace to our family. Shimon and Levi do not do so much better. Their, Their weapons, weapons are, are called tools of lawlessness, for when angry, they, they slay a man, and when pleased, they maim an ox. This, this blessing has some context. context. Remember, Remember back, back to the story, story when, when Dina was raped? raped? It is without their father's consent. In fact, after he agreed to an acceptable outcome, these two brothers go into Shechem and murder all of the men. The men are at a disadvantage because part of the deal that Yaakov had made with the men of Shechem is that they would be circumcised. So they're all at a disadvantage and Shimon and Levi take advantage. Judah, even after the story with Tamar, is praised for his growth as a person. Yes, he helps Benjamin avoid being a prisoner, but that story we read of Tamar a few weeks ago, Yaakov sees such a growth in Judah that he says, the scepter shall never depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his feet. What a wonderful way to think of your son. Yet, this blessing too does not last in the way you might have expected it. The other nine sons receive blessings that are somewhat benign. It's not always obvious what causes Yaakov to offer each blessing. Some read like incidental statements. Asher's, bread shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties. A pleasant blessing, I guess. I guess. But beyond blessings, there's something else happening here. Yaakov is telling his children that he is leaving them a legacy and that the legacy he leaves will last forever. Yaakov is the first of the patriarchs who are told were ill before his death. When a doctor diagnoses a terminal illness, even with the terrible news, there is often time for the family to say goodbye and receive their blessing. They have the chance to inherit the legacy being left to them. And if they are particularly lucky, they have opportunities to discuss the legacy and share how they plan to pass it on when the time comes. Judaism has gifted us with many legacies, often in the ways of values. I have found myself thinking of the legacy passed on to us by our ancestors in the context of the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. I know that there are many ways to discuss the reasons why and how this war should or should not be fought. And I want to, and I want to start by acknowledging wholly and fully that there are many people whom I have different views and opinions than the ones I regard holding the war. But I think there are ways we can talk to each other. And one of the areas that seems the most natural is through a Jewish lens. 
Mr. Mr. Rogers, Rogers has something to say about, about this idea. idea. Some of you might know what he's famous for. Always, Always look for the helpers. There are so many people who are helpers right now. And while I like to believe that humanity is filled with inherent goodness, there is simply too much presence that does not allow me to hold by the simple precept of goodness of humanity. Differently though, I think our tradition is filled with values which encourage us to act in good and holy ways. Let's start with one of the most simple. And one that I hope there is no disagreement about. There is much consensus by our sages that there is no greater mitzvah than Pidyon Hashui, the returning of those being held hostage. Baba Batra, a tractate in the Talmud, calls this mitzvah a mitzvah rabbah, a huge and great mitzvah. Rambam, also known as Maimonides, offers the following. The redeeming of captives takes precedence over supporting the poor or clothing them. There is no greater mitzvah than redeeming the captives, for the problems of the captives include being hungry, thirsty, unclothed, and they are in danger of their lives too. Ignoring the need to, re to redeem captives goes against these, or goes with these Jewish laws. Do not harden your heart or shut out your hand against your needy fellow from the barn. Do not stand idly by your neighbor's blood is shed. Always look for the helpers. There can be no debate about the value Judaism puts on Pidyon Shmuim. Think about the posters you have seen hung up in our own community and beyond across the world. Think about the empty table display that was here in Baltimore and remains permanent in Hostage Square, Tel Aviv. You might recognize that place with its previous name, Rabin Square, marking yet another tragedy for our people. I challenge you to listen daily to Rachel Goldberg Cullen. It's 85 days since her son was captured. He was greatly wounded trying to save other people. The mother of Hirsch, who is still held captive, having been terribly wounded, tried to save people at the Nova Festival. His mother is spoken daily, bringing awareness not only for her son, but all the hostages who remain captured by Hamas. Think about the hostages who were freed during the brief ceasefire. Now, with several weeks passing from their release, they are not hiding away from their memories. They are outspoken and committed to advocate for the release of those who remain hostages. Again, weakened about how, but I believe without a doubt that the objective of Pidyon Shvuim leads and guides the IDF overall and leads and guides the soldiers on their everyday mission. Let's look at another value and legacy that we have been gifted, Hachnasat Orchid. The origin of the mitzvah to welcome guests goes back to Avraham when he opened his tent to three strangers without knowing they were heavenly guests. Always look for the helpers. The kibbutzim in the Gaza envelope understandably are not able to return to their homes right now and there will need to be serious construction before those kibbutzim are up and running. Kibbutz Be'eri, one of the hardest hits of the kibbutzim, has been staying at the Dead Sea Resort. Last week, the kibbutz members cooked and hosted a meal for the staff 
that that open their their space space for them, them, taking taking such such good good care of them during during this tragic tragic time. And maybe maybe that's that's the way of the kibbutzim and the kibbutzniks, right? They go out of their way to build communal communities. Hotels in the middle of the country have opened their rooms, restaurants, and their entire staff to to support the enormous amount of people who have no homes to return to. This was not asked of them. This was offered immediately. We learn in Leviticus 19, love your neighbor as yourself. As you can imagine, our commentators have many ways of understanding this particular mitzvah. Sforno, who was a 15th, sec- 15th or 16th century scholar from Italy, says there follows a general, all-inclusive rule to be observed in relations and towards one's fellow, phrased via hafta kamofa, and you should love your neighbor like you love yourself. Telling us to apply the same yardstick to our concern for our fellow that we would want apply to ourselves if we were in his shoes or a similar situation. In a halacha commentary on Leviticus called the Sifra, Rabbi Akiva said there is no greater principle in the Torah, meaning to say that as many commandments are dependent on it, as one that loves his fellow like himself will not cheat him in money, have adultery with his wife, nor hurt him from any other angle. Even our modern sages are on the same page as our ancient ones. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, who has maybe the best title ever, understands that these verses at their core mean do not hate each other. Do not hate your brother in your heart, You must surely admonish your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. Do not take revenge or bear a grudge for the children of your people. Love your neighbor as you do yourself. I am a God. He explains the inner logic of these two verses, love your neighbor as yourself, by saying not all neighbors are lovable. There are those who out of envy or malice have done things that are harmful to you. I do not therefore command you to live as though you are angels without any emotions natural to human beings. That is why when someone does you wrong, you must confront the wrongdoer. You must tell them of your feelings of hurt and distress and maybe that you completely understood his attention, or it may be that he genuinely meant the injury he's done to you. He may sincerely repent, though, of what he did when it's pointed out to him. However, if you fail to talk it through, there is a real possibility that you will bear a grudge, and in the fullness of time, come to take revenge. Let's look for the helpers. The Druze are one of the most unique minorities living in Israel. Most of them live up north in the Galil, or in the Golan. They are not Muslims, but they are Arabs. They are not Christian, and they are still Arabs. And they clearly are not Jewish, and still really, really, they are not Arabs. Well, no, really, really, they are Arabs. They are a religion unto themselves, and there is no way to convert into being Druze. Druze, while not mandated to be drafted, very often join the idea. In the Druze village of Jules, Nor, a Jew rest, uh, Druze restaurant, decided that they were going to become kosher. Their concern was that simply their neighbors many of whom were displaced, did not have food to eat, and that soldiers need meals. Amazingly, with the help of the chief rabbi, 
which more, more often, often than, than not, not is not, not helpful. helpful. <laughs> and anyway, anyway went out, out of their way, way to transition, transition the restaurant into a government-recognized kosher establishment. The owner of Noor said that it's not only in need great or for warm, healthy meals in a moment, but hopes that when this war is over, his restaurant will be a place that brings Jews and Druze together, furthering the relationship that they already share. The Federation of North America on October 8th hoped to raise $500,000 in an emergency campaign to support Israel. They came just shy. I'm sorry, did I say five? I said $500,000. They came just shy of a million dollars. This is about us. We love our neighbors. We showed up and showed our concern for the people of Israel. The same way we would want them to stand up and help, help us. Again, in the interest of finding common ground and talking about the war, there are Americans, both Jewish and not, who have given tzedakah to Palestinian Gazans. They recognize there are innocents in Gaza, and they see these innocents as their fellows, for whom they are also responsible. I want to finish with one more story I read, perhaps my favorite story that, that's come up in the last couple of weeks. A soldier was sitting on a bus in Jerusalem, and a Haredi boy, an elementary school kid, turned to the soldier and offered him a large portion of the tzedakah he was supposed to give in school. The soldier, recognizing, recognizing the child's background and the education system, asked, won't you get in trouble for not having all of your tzedakah today? The boy replied, my Rebbe is teaching us that we need to do things to help our soldiers because they are risking our lives to keep us safe. When I tell my Rebbe, he won't be mad at me. He will be proud. The boy is growing up in a community where it is unlikely he will enter the IDF at 18. But right now, today, he is being taught that the soldiers and the Haredim are responsible for one another. In the months leading up to October 7, Israel was so divided that there were weekly protests throughout the country. The issue is judicial reform. I could share my opinion with you, but that would be totally divergent. The point is that Israelis, who were totally fractured and polarized, I'm sure that the people who support the judicial change still support the judicial change. And I'm equally confident that those who are adamant against the change have also not changed their position. Today, they are serving in their units. This singular political issue is tabled for now. Loving your neighbor like loving yourself is core to the idea. It allows Jewish, Christians, and Muslim search soldiers to serve together in integrated units. It helps Israelis and diaspora Jews gather the amazingly amount of winter clothing that the soldiers need and make sure it arrives on the border. Legacies have the potential to be amazing. The three meets vote I have mentioned are only a few of the legacies gifted to us by our ancestors. There are so many more, and there are so many ways you can interpret them. I pray daily for the end of this war. I cry daily that this war ever happened, and that it doesn't feel like there's an imminent stop. I cry for the hostages, I cry for the people who have been displaced on both sides of the border. I cry to, for the children on both sides of the border 
who do not have homes that they can return to. I need and I think we all need a lens in which to process what we see and how we feel about the terrible time. It's probably not shocking to anyone that as a rabbi, I'm using the Torah of our ancestors to try to understand our world today. There are other ways to process, and I'm sure that even using the same legacies I shared this morning, people could understand them in a different context. And that's okay. What we need to share, all of us here, all of us in Israel, is the legacy of Yehavta Larecha Kamocha. We can disagree, we can argue, but we are Klal Yisrael, all the people of Israel. And we're commanded to treat each other in the ways that we wish to be loved. Shabbat Shalom.